Hello there, this is Darth Melvin, leader of the Knights of Melvin. Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 5 is overrated garbage. There's been five episodes of the Disney Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi fake fan film. This one was probably the best episode. We got a flashback with Anakin and Obi-Wan. We got another Order 66 flashback. Vader was actually in the episode and did stuff. There was some action, some death, and some big reveals with the subpar writing. And everyone, mainly the Disney shills, are ecstatic over this episode. Oh my god. God, it's such a good episode! A lot of them were criticizing it previously. All the garbage is now forgotten because out of the five pieces of shit we got, this one was the cleanest. It was the brownest. Nice and long. Good texture. Best smelling turd to date with this fake fan film. So, what if it was the best? It's all Shit! I have broken it all down previously in my four reviews and live streams. Maybe others have forgotten how terrible the first four episodes were. Maybe they're shilling for Disney! Well, for all the shills and Disney sympathizers out there, get ready to cry because I'm going to rip apart this episode! Just stop! Just stop! Please! Don't destroy this episode for me! <laughs> nope. I enjoy making you cry. <laughs> The first scene is a flashback of Coruscant. This takes place right before Attack of the Clones, and this is the very first frame. You notice right away this is not the same kind of background you'd see in the movies. This is a still picture. These speeders in the sky? They're not moving! <laughs> so, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Just a cheap background? And they didn't even get Coruscant right! Then I saw this on Twitter, that Star Wars girl. What the fuck is this? Is that Mickey Mouse? Garbage company, garbage episode, and this is the first fucking frame. Everyone's jacking it to this show, and I'm destroying it already in the first frame. Are you ready? Are you? Finally! We are getting an Obi-Wan Kenobi flashback. This is part of the reason why some are choosing to ignore the first episodes and just simp for this one. I liked the entire flashback. I did. But this is episode 5 out of a 6 episode series. I wanted to see this stuff multiple times with the first time being in the first two episodes. The only reason why we're watching the show is Obi-Wan Kenobi and Anakin Skywalker. Yet, this company, Disney, has spent more time developing Reva, developing strong women, destroying canon, completely neglecting the reason why anyone is tuning into this show. And you think in episode 5, after 66% of the show is complete, I'm going to give Disney credit for an Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi flashback? No. Fuck Disney. They don't deserve any credit for finally giving us a small part of what we wanted to see. Again, I like this flashback. I would have loved to see more flashbacks. I also recognize that people who are 40 look older than people who are 20. This might be a nitpick, but yeah, uh, why didn't Disney de-age Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen? Their technology is really good now. A YouTuber by the name of Outlaw Video Production de-aged Anakin. He did it in less than a day. He accomplished more in one day than most sequel-loving communists accomplish in their whole career. Considering all the shit Disney's produced, I'm not giving them an inch when it comes to this show. They should have fucking de-aged Anakin and Obi-Wan Kenobi, just like the still picture in the background in the first frame, just trying to save some money and a full display of circus film incompetence. The Empire tracks Obi-Wan and Vader promotes Reva to the Grand Inquisitor. At first, I just laughed. It made more sense later, but it's all still a big joke that I will get into later. Star Wars Sex Plane's new favorite character returned. He nailed the over-the-top shtick. I feel like that would have been a difficult scene to get right, but it worked very well for me. He's just one of the many useless characters in this show. He passes his gear to Haja, which is in itself a nice little arc of how Kenobi has learned to trust people again. <laughs> 
Leia's droid locks everyone in, Ice Cube can't get the door open, they can't escape, and the Empire has arrived. Leia volunteers to climb into a small space and get the door open. I thought this was really stupid. A lot of the fake fans, the social justice weenies, they probably regularly cry about white privilege on Twitter. Leia is a white privilege princess. So this is for The Last Jedi activists. Why would a highly white privileged girl be a total expert with electronics? What experience in her 10 years of this royal lifestyle give her such knowledge? Am I just Melvin the Big Meanie and all the other names in the book? Now you might be saying, <laughs> Anakin Skywalker is good with electronics. Well, yeah, I can see how it's in her genes, but Anakin was a slave. He didn't live in a giant palace. He worked all day, and when he came home, he was productive. He didn't just lay around all day watching the Disney Channel. Obi-Wan is a private talk with Reva. We figure out officially Reva was a youngling at the Jedi Temple. She's not serving Vader, she wants to kill him. Going into this show, I wanted to see death at the Jedi Temple. I thought the first scene in this series, the one that triggered all the fake fans on Twitter, was terrible. It was weak as fuck, so I knew I wasn't going to get what I wanted. But surprisingly, we got a couple shots of Anakin, walking in angry and raging a little, and he fucking sliced and diced younglings. <laughs> I gotta cry about this on Twitter! <laughs> Hashtag cancel Disney Star Wars! So I'm overall not happy with the Order 66 stuff, but I did enjoy these shots in the episode. It's a lot like Attack of the Clones with the Sand People. You get some frames of rage, and then you piece together the rest in your head. Before Obi-Wan figured out Reva is one of the younglings who saw Anakin Slice and dice. her friends, he asked how she knew Vader was Anakin. I quote Jake Kenobi, Vader would keep that a secret. How does Jake Kenobi know that Darth Vader, the man who burned alive on Mustafar, would be highly concerned about his real name leaking? He didn't seem to care about that when he murdered everyone at the Jedi Temple. It's not like he was wearing a mask then. Maybe it's common sense. I just think it's another example of bad writing in the show. Obi-Wan had no idea Anakin was alive, no idea that Darth Vader was running around killing Jedi for 10 years, yet he knows Vader wouldn't want his real identity leaked. And you might be saying, Darth Malvin, Obi-Wan trained Anakin for over 10 years. He knows his personality. Yeah, he thought he knew Anakin well. He had no idea Anakin liked to murder people. He certainly has no idea how a burned, mutilated, dark side powered cyborg Anakin would act. In this case, knowing how he'd want to keep his real name a secret. We can debate this shit, but I can assure you, there's been more thought in this review than in the circus film writing team. Tala and her droid are killed fighting off the Empire. Once again, we are reminded it took Disney characters to make the original George Lucas trilogy possible. Tala was a strong whammon, had a lot more screen time. She will be remembered. But Wade will never be forgotten. Call it sexist, I call it non-canon Disney Star Wars. The whole time Reva is leading this attack, Vader is just chilling on a Star Destroyer. He wants Kenobi more than anyone, yet he's allowing someone who failed miserably just recently, letting Kenobi escape, lead the assault. And Vader also knows she's a rat, but he's just chilling, just like he did with the fire on Mapuzo. Disney Vader just chilling. He'll just let the rat handle it. Terrible writing. Vader tells Reva to back off and makes his way down to the planet Jabim. It appears Reva off-screen allowed Jake Kenobi to escape. He should have been there from the beginning, and Obi-Wan wouldn't have escaped. Vader sees a transport taking off, and he stops it with the Force. But it turns out, no one is in it. The second transport with people takes off and gets away. A lot of people are saying, wow, this scene was cool. I agree, Vader looked badass. But, I can't help but ask, 
Why was there a fake transport? The only logical explanation is they knew Vader was on the planet. They knew he had the power to stop a moving transport and they suspected he'd arrive around the same time they were going to take off. Now, the only one who would know all this is Obi-Wan Kenobi. Reva told him Vader is coming, but for someone who doesn't know Vader, he knows Vader pretty well. He knows Vader wouldn't want to be Docs, and he knows Vader could completely shut down a moving transport. And in the very little time Obi-Wan had after reuniting with the group, he had to mansplain all this and orchestrate this Disney Ryan Johnson bait and switch, subverting our expectations. It's more evidence of little thoughts going into this show. Last scene in the flashback, Anakin has Obi-Wan defeated and he chokes, loses his lightsaber. I think this is a foreshadowing to what's to come in the next episode. I predict Vader will destroy Jake Kenobi, but he will choke and pay the price. Reva is a complete moron. Kenobi escapes again. I think she let him go. If you're Reva... You know Vader's going to be pissed, and he's going to kill Reva and blame her for Kenobi escaping for a second time. So knowing this, Reva should just run away. She's fucked. Instead, she tries to sneak up on Vader and stab him. That shit's not going to work on Darth Vader. It's not going to work on Disney Vader. Vader and Reva have a little bit of a duel. Vader completely owns her. And the Grand Inquisitor is back. He's doing all right. And Vader and him were playing Reva. Vader knew that Reva was a youngling in the Jedi Temple. So this is a big moment in the show. Big reveal. Let's expose the bad writing. At what point did Vader know that Reva was a rat? When judging the level of incompetence, it matters. If he knew from the very beginning, Vader is completely retarded. He allows someone who can dox him at any time, run around the office, fuck with the daily operations of the Inquisitors? And why? Because he needed to use her in her passionate quest for revenge to get Kenobi out of hiding? The Grand Inquisitor, Penis Head, they seem to be doing a good job. If you are impatient with them, you think they are napping on the job, not getting things done, you either fire and replace them, or you get off your ass and you find Kenobi. So did Vader know about Reva for a long time? It's possible. But what makes more sense is he didn't know about her until she stabbed the Grand Inquisitor, which looking back on it was a really stupid move by Reva. I questioned this in an earlier review. Didn't Vader look into the Grand Inquisitor situation? Doesn't he know his top guy was stabbed with a lightsaber? If he couldn't figure it out on his own, did he talk to the Grand Inquisitor who straight up told him, that bitch fucking stabbed me? I think he found out Reva was a rat after the stabbing and started playing Reva from there. But... Why would he give her power to lead the Kenobi Project and give her a fake promotion to Grand Inquisitor? Reva is a rat! She can dox Vader at any moment! It was a stupid plan to kidnap Bail Organa's kid! Only out of luck, Leia being super important to the Jedi is the reason Obi-Wan decided to come out of hiding. Regardless, Reva already served her purpose. Now, Vader found Kenobi on Mapuzo. He could have killed him, but he choked. Before he choked, he should have killed Reva, but he didn't, and Reva got a hold of Leia again. You do have Leia that got Kenobi to come out of hiding. Maybe you can use that again. But under no circumstance do I see a reason to keep Reva alive as soon as you figured out she was a rat. You telling me Penis Head couldn't have protected the Imperial base better than Reva? It was Reva's dumbass that lost Leia, lost Kenobi. Then what's with this fake rage Vader has in the last episode? It's like they are winging it at this point, doing sequel trilogy writing. They have Vader choke Reva out of rage, then decides not to kill her. And in episode 5, oh, Ryan Johnson, he knew the whole time Reva was a fake. Vader fucked up by not killing Reva after choking on Mapuzo, and he fucked up again by not killing Reva after losing Kenobi on the Imperial base. Then Vader lets a rat lead the assault on Jake, Tala, and Ice Cube? An incompetent rat, too. Why didn't Vader initially go? It's cool seeing the Grand Inquisitor get revenge and Vader revealing how he outsmarted her. Vader may have outsmarted her, but he proved to the audience that he's a fucking dumbass. At many points, he could have killed Reva and allowed the other Inquisitors to do their job. 
Then it gets worse. Reva was stabbed by Vader in the Jedi Temple. Qui-Gon died from that easily, but Reva lived. The child! The same thing happens as an adult, and it looks like she's going to live again! Why didn't Vader finish her? How stupid is Disney Vader? Did I mention? I think I have a couple times. She knows he's Anakin Skywalker! Finish the fucking job! At least in episode 3, we had a fiery explosion that poorly explained how Kenobi was able to escape death from Vader. In this episode, the one that everyone is simping for, Vader just walks away. So, Reva's not really that injured and finds the message from Bail Organa. She hears children, Tatooine, Owen. So, she's going to put a band-aid on her little cut and make her way to Luke Skywalker. If this show already hasn't destroyed canon, get ready for canon to be killed some more! And at this point, why does she give a fuck about Luke Skywalker? She failed miserably. She's lucky to be alive. She can leave and start a new life. Vader wouldn't know. I could see her going there to get to the bottom of this, get a little more info. But she's obviously going to cause some drama. And for what? Why? Because this is the Reva show. It's not the Obi-Wan Kenobi show. Again with the horrible writing on the show, why is Bail Organa revealing all the information on Anakin's kids in the hologram to Obi-Wan? One, that's stupid as hell, anyone could see this message. Two, he suspected Obi-Wan might be in trouble, so it's even more stupid he'd reveal the master plan. He mentions going over to Tatooine to help Owen, and honestly, I think he should. Jake Kenobi with his lightsaber buried in the desert has done nothing to protect Luke Skywalker the past 10 years. Bail Organa would do a much better job protecting Luke. His wealth and connections to the Imperial Senate is much more valuable than Obi-Wan's binoculars and judo chops. He could set up Owen and his family for life somewhere on another planet. He could hire security to watch over them. Obi-Wan Kenobi Episode 5 is overrated garbage. The Disney shows are pushing this episode hard! They're going to push Episode 6 harder! This is Star Wars YouTubers. They either straight up shill or they ride the fence. I don't like the show. Oh, I liked that. The series ends. Oh, no, I love the show. I give it an 8 out of 10 and I can't wait for the next Disney Plus show. I agree with all of Melvin's points, but I loved it. I have a talent for shutting my brain off and just not accurately analyzing a Star Wars Wars show when I'm a Star Wars YouTuber. We have one episode left in this Disney Star Wars Obi-Wan Kenobi fake fan film. Make sure to check out the live streams and my review for the series finale. Possibly only the season finale. I'm growing stronger in the dark side every day. But I need more knights. Become a knight, subscribe to the channel, join the Knights of Melvin Discord, help plot to take down Disney and all their shills. The dark side of the Force is a pathway to many abilities some consider to be unnatural.